Hey, Falcon fans, I'm Thomas Mott. Welcome to Atlanta Falcons today. It is a Monday. The bye week is over, and we are looking ahead to the Dolphin game. It comes up on Sunday, and a chance to get to 500, which will be very, very exciting. The Falcons have not been 500 in, like, a very, 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 very long time. So we'll jump into the latest Falcon news and rumors and get you guys ready to go here on a Falcons Monday. Let's start with a ridiculous article that I saw on SI.com just the other day talking about trading Grady Jarrett. Now, we're going to talk about the... I guess the likelihood that this could happen, but also why I think the article is very, very ridiculous. So first off, the SI.com article says that they should look to trade Grady Jarrett, which is why we're talking about this, obviously. They mentioned that Grady Jarrett is a free agent in 2023, although he does have an out in his contract at the end of 2022, and so technically entering the final year of his deal, even though it does go for another two seasons. And as I mentioned, Falcons are 2-3. and three. They're not 1-4. and four. They're not 0-5. Oh They're 2-3, and three, traveling to a very bad Dolphins team on Sunday with a chance to get back to 500, which plays a part in my thought process on trade away Grady Jarrett. First, we'll start with Jeremy Brenner from SI.com, and here's his quote, which we're talking about, the reason we're talking about this here, up on your screen. Quote, Jarrett has an out in his contract at the end of the season before becoming a free agent in 2023, making him a trade candidate for the Falcons should the team look to build for the future. The team has second-year player Marlon Davidson and rookie take one Graham behind Drew Jarrett on the depth chart. The team might want extended reps for the young players for deciding on what to do at the position in free agency and the draft. End quote. Now, I'm not going to rip Jeremy here for this take because I don't think it's a, it's, it's not a bad take, right? If you're trying to write an article right now to get some clicks for the Falcons, talking about trading Grady Jarrett would make sense because there technically is a possibility. If the Falcons wanted to, they very easily could. They could go ahead and get rid of his contract. They could go ahead and, you know, get some draft picks and then reset at the defensive tackle position. However, the Falcons have wins in front of them. And I keep preaching this here on the channel. And maybe I'm speaking, you know, preaching to the choir here, but I do think Atlanta's about to go on a little bit of a run just based on the fact that they have a very easy schedule. We talk about it every single week. Miami coming up this week. And then Carolina, those are two, I mean, trending down football teams. The Dolphins might be the worst team in the foot in the, in, in the NFL right now. I mean, they are losing to everybody. Grady still makes a very, very big impact on this defensive line. I think the Falcons are trying to win some games this year. Then you can't trade away Grady Jarrett. Now, if they lose the next two, because the trade deadline is the beginning of November, and so you have a couple of weeks here to kind of see what happens against the Dolphins and the Panthers. If you blow it against the Dolphins and Panthers, then maybe, just maybe, if the team calls, you could go ahead and get rid of him. But I just think trading away Grady Jarrett is not the best and smartest move the Falcons can do. I honestly think they should try to, to extend him. I think he should be a centerpiece of this defense going forward, even though the defense needs a lot of changing. Imagine Grady Jarrett plus a first-round draft pick pass rusher in 2022. Right? I mean, Grady Jarrett plus a competent secondary behind him. I think Grady Jarrett is a key to the future and not somebody that you get rid of only to have to draft his replacement because you don't know if Marlon Davidson is going to be as good as Grady Jarrett. I don't think so. And then draft his replacement and then, you know, move forward in the next couple of years trying to go ahead and fill the, the giant hole that would be left by one Grady Jarrett. So I wouldn't do it. I get why they talk about it, but I think that Atlanta is trying to win some football games. They need Grady Jarrett to go ahead and do so. Get pinned comment down below right here. Answer this question. Would you consider trading Grady Jarrett at all? Like, Would you even consider it? If you would, type Y down below for yes. If you would not, go down below and type N down below for no. Quick shout out to our sponsor for today's video where I won a bunch of money this week. Let I me mean, just be honest. I'm balling out with my picks. If you want to get in on some winning some money, maybe just follow my picks because I'm, I'm winning money. Chatsports.com forward slash bet Falcons. Promo code is Falcons125. You can bet on the Falcons. The Braves. Are, how about that game last night? 2-0 in the NLCS. Lenny United won the other day too. How about the Hawks starting Thursday night? A great time to be in the ATL and a great time to bet on some football games. As you see on your screen, I'm 18-10 and 10 so far this year and I went 4-5 and five out of my 5 picks this week. I got the, the Packers beat the Bears by more than 4.5. Now the Chargers did blow it against the Ravens. They wet the bed. Okay, my fault. I thought the Chargers would be good, plus three. Didn't happen. Cardinals obliterated the Browns. We knew that would happen. Called it. Cowboys, last second game-winning touchdown. Thank you, Dak Prescott. Won that one as well. And I got the Jags, their first win in 20 weeks. The Dolphins are so trash. Four out of the five. I won. I was in the green this week, as I've been all year. If you want to bet on some games with me, JetSports.com, for us, bet Falcons, promo code Falcons125. I don't bet crazy numbers. I'm not going to give you know, my entire paycheck on betting for this team or that team. $10 here. $10 there. You get a win. You enjoy the game. It's always a lot of fun. Jump into the betting game with me uh, at your own pleasure at chatsports.com forward slash bet Falcons. Okay, other Falcons news that got shuffled kind of into the ether over the weekend is the fact that Josh Andrews, the guard who should have been the starting left guard at the start of the season, remember that whole debacle? He is returning from injured reserve, being activated for off the injured reserve via the broken left hand, which again caused him to miss so far the first, you know, quarter of this season. So he comes back from the broken hand, and the question now that we're all asking is, what are you going to do with him? Because he has 21 days to practice, right? The practice window is activated, so he has time to go ahead and, you know, get back on the practice field and get actually ready for, he assumes, an actual roster spot. But Jalen Mayfield has been starting at left guard since week one, and honestly, he was really bad early, but started to kind of figure things out. And so now the Falcons have, you know, 
a, a surplus, which is rare, of offensive linemen, but a decision to make at left guard especially. Here was the Falcoholic, a great write-up on the Josh Andrews situation. I'll throw that up on your screen right now. Quote, the Falcons have activated Josh Andrews off of injured reserve by Wednesday, uh, or have to activate Andrews off of injured reserve by Wednesday if they're going to do it, which they did. Thanks to David Walker for reminding me that his 21-day practice window began on Wednesday. The issue is that Mayfield has settled in a bit at left guard, and he's and if he's hardly the most impressive offensive lineman on the roster, it behooves the team to take a long look at him and see if he can stick at the starting job. If Johnson is activated, or sorry, if Andrews is, is activated, seems likely he'll start out as a reserve. The team will have to cut Drew Dahlman, unlikely, cut Co uh, Colby Gossett, who could hit the practice squad, or trim at another position and carry an extra offensive lineman while he gets back up to speed, end quote. So they just said it right there. That's kind of the situation that you have. Do you want to, you know, disrupt the offensive line, which gave up zero sacks against the Jets last week for the first time in, like, forever, and is playing a lot better, or do you want to go and see if Josh Andrews can make them even better than what they already are? Like, this is a very fair argument from both sides, although I think I would keep Joe Mayfield at left guard until you absolutely can't play him there any longer. Like, if he keeps trending up, as rookies do, it means he's only going to get better. So unless Josh Andrews is just balling out in practice and Joe Mayfield is getting beat in games, I think Joe uh, Mayfield should stay as the starting left guard going forward for this offensive line, which, again, has been playing very, very well, and they're going to be playing against bad teams going forward, and so I think they can only keep trending forward and trending up, which is good news for all of us here uh, in Falcon land. Okay, we'll get into Tua Tagovailoa in a second here because there's some new injury news that's important. You're going to want to know this. First, though, make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel as we continue to try to grow here as we approach 5,000 subs on Atlanta Falcons today. We cover everything regarding your Falcons. Falcons on almost a daily basis, and so instead of turning on ESPN, which we'll talk about zero Falcon news today because they're focused in on, you know, everything else going on in the world of TV show ratings, we will talk about the Falcons, keep you up to date on the Falcons in all a very condensed 10-minute form. As you sitting at work, what's going on with the Falcons? You know, surprise, su subscribe to us, check your subscription box, we drop the latest videos, watch it, done, back to work, and you're up to date. Right away, you can go to the water cooler and, you know, talk to the Falcons and be, you know, as up to date as you possibly can. So if you appreciate that and enjoy our channel, go down below and hit that red subscribe button. Okay, quick update here on Tua, who did play yesterday in the London game, the London loss to the Jacksonville Jaguars. However, a new report coming out today as he gets ready for the Falcons at home in Miami is that he is still not 100% with his recent hip slash rib injury. I think it's a rib injury right now going on uh, with Tua. And so people are saying that even though he did play yesterday, he didn't look good, which I saw obviously watching the game, but that he's still recovering and rehabbing to the point that there's a chance that Jacoby Brissett could be the starter for the Dolphins come Sunday. This is a story we're going to keep an eye on as the day goes by and as the of course, the week goes by, but I think you kind of want Tua to play because even though he did throw two touchdowns to Jalen Waddle on Sunday, a very bad interception, just bad decision making overall. I would rather play Tua than, than uh, Jacoby Brissett, and if Tua is more banged up, then definitely still want to play Tua. We'll keep an eye on that news going forward here on a Monday. Now, your next four games we keep mentioning are still pretty darn easy, right? The Dolphins this week, Carolina, who just had such a bizarre loss to the uh, to the Vikings. The Vikings are a decent football team. They get blown out early on. They come all the way back. Donald scores. They go for two, and then they give up the field goal. Sorry, it is a touchdown. It was a touchdown. Watch the red zone. It was a touchdown uh, to the Vikings, so they lose again. And so then you get the Saints next week, who had a bye, but I think are very iffy. And then Dallas, which I think will be a good test, right? You get the Dolphins, Panthers, Saints. Let's say you win all three of those games. You're going to be flying high as a Falcon fan. Then the Cowboys on the road to really kind of decide, okay, are we legit, or are we just kind of playing bad football teams? I like the way the schedule is shaping up, and I like the chances the Falcons have of winning on Sunday. If you guys agree the Falcons are going to win on Sunday, give this video a thumbs up. Like, smash the like button if Atlanta's going to win on Sunday, as I think they will. You guys, I think they will too. I mean, one in five, right? Dolphins, not that good. Give this video a thumbs up. Quick chat look at the NFC South standings before we go ahead and end. Tampa Bay beat Philadelphia on Thursday. They're 5-1, and one, running away with the division, but not, you know, they haven't really played a lot of divisional games, so they're not taking it over completely. Saints did not play yesterday, so they sit at 3-2. and two. Carolina did. They are 3-3. Three and three. And Atlanta had the same bye as the Saints, so we're sitting at the bottom, but looking upwards, trending upwards, uh, down there at 2-3. and three. So good news and good things are happening in Atlanta today. I'm excited to see what the rest of the week has, and we'll have plenty of great content as we wrap up on today's video regarding your Falcons the next couple of days and weeks, including mailbag videos, news and rumors, preview for the Dolphins game, everything you could possibly want regarding your Atlanta Falcons is here on the channel, and so make sure you guys go down below and are subscribed. Braves, again, if you have any side note, there's, there's, there's no graphic for this, but thumbs up for the Braves winning last night. Goodness gracious, what a, it's a great time to be an Atlanta Falcons, or Atlanta sports fan in general. Hope the Falcons can keep winning to keep all of them together, but what a fun weekend overall without the Falcons playing and everyone else winning in the ATL. Again, I'm Thomas Mott, as we are out of time here today on our News and Rumor video for Atlanta Falcons today. I'm Thomas Mott, signing off. Stay safe out there. Enjoy the rest of your day.